Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Well, as I said in the last video, we climbed past 10,000 uh, subscribers, and I think in the last seven days we've had, you know, close to 700 additional uh, viewers uh, sign on and subscribe to the channel. So I want to welcome all those new people here to the channel, and uh, please, you know, get into the comments and let me know how you, uh, what you think of the channel, because, you know, I try to produce videos to satisfy a wide range of, of knowledge and uh, experience uh, in the hobby. So let me know if you think I'm doing my job and how I can improve uh, the videos for you. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. That way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. Today I want to go ahead and finish work on the Blue Point uh, switch machines, showing you how to make the electrical connections to the switch located here on the bottom, so that we can control the polarity of our frogs each time that we actually throw the points uh, in, on the electrofrog turnouts. And this would be the same no matter what type of power routing turnout you're using, if you're using a microengineering or a Walther's or whatever brand that allows you to uh, control the polarity of your frog, the Blue Point switch machine will do it for you. The first thing we need to do is take a look at each one of the turnouts here on the layout and figure out which wire needs to be attached to them for a given route through the turnout. So let's go ahead and I'm going to move in here on top of the layout and we'll take a look at each switch and I'll show you how in advance you can figure out which wire needs to be attached to which contact on the switch machine. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here we are looking at the, uh, the right-hand module, and uh, we're going to work with this one today because it's got the most turnouts on it, and uh, I can show you more here than with the other one. And what I want to do is show you how we go about deciding uh, the color of the wire that's going to be needed to attach to the frog at any given point. Uh, when the switch is thrown, okay? So that we don't have to do a, a, uh, a trial and error type of method for attaching wires, because that's one thing you can do. You can just hook up wires to the uh, Blue Point uh, switch machine contacts and throw the switch and see if it uh, creates a short when a loco goes through it. And if it does, then you can just reverse the, the wire connections. But what I want to show you is how you can do it in advance figure out which wires need to be attached to the frog in a given uh, route, and then we can set it up underneath of the layout and do it the first time without this trial and error, error process. Okay, I've do, zoomed in on this section of the uh, layout so that we can take a look because we've got several turnouts here that I can show you. So what we want to do is determine uh, whether or not we want the red or the black wire to be attached to the frog when it's set up to be straight through, okay? When we've got a route that's going to take us straight through the turnout. Now, this one is set for the opposite direction. So now I've set it straight through, okay? So they're all straight through. Now, going back to when I did the, uh, the power bus here on the layout, if you remember, I set it up so that the red uh, wire from the bus, from our power bus, is attached to the rear rail. So red for rear, and then the black wire will be attached to the uh, re opposite rail, the one closest to the front of the layout. And we did that in each case. So this, would, this is going to be red, that's going to be black. Red, black, red, black, and so on. Everywhere on the layout, we're going to have that arrangement. So now when a, uh, when a locomotive goes through this turnout here, this is going to be the red wire. Okay. And we need, this one here over here is going to be the black wire. When we get to the frog, it can be either red or black, depending on how that thir uh, turnout switch is set. So we need to be able to determine, okay, this needs to be black when it's going straight through, because this is red and this is going to be black. Now. If I were to set that for the diverging route this way, then this is black, and in this case, it would need to be red, okay? 
So what we want to do then is put that back to where, whoops, where I had it so that it's straight through. And on each one of these turnouts, I did that same thing. I made the assumption that this is black, so that needs to be red. This one, this rail is red, so the frog needs to be black. On this one, the rear rail is red, so the frog needs to be black, okay, when we're going straight through. Now, and I did that with all of these. Okay, so we're down here under the layout now. And what I wanted to show you, though, before we get started with the, uh, uh, with the blue points, is the arrangements that I made for this crossover uh, between switches one and two. And what I did was, this is the uh, control rod, or the push rod, that goes from the fascia to the blue point switch machine. And then coming out of the back side of the switch machine, I attached another uh, push rod setup that goes down and through this support here, and over through this support, and then comes up and is attached to the other side of this blue point controller. So now, when I move this one, you can see this one over here is also moving. So I'm able to control both of the uh, blue point uh, switch machines and both of the uh, turnouts by just moving one of the push buttons on the fascia. Okay, so that worked out better than I thought it would. Uh, because of this extreme angle right here, uh, it's a little bit tighter than these others are. But it's working fine. Uh, if it pops down the road, well, I might have to go ahead and add a separate push rod here, or go with maybe a, a metal choke cable out of a 51 Chevy might be a little bit more resilient and hold up better in this situation. But so far, it hasn't popped or split or anything, and it's holding up fairly well. So I, I think that's going to work out. Uh, the concept is good, but this extreme angle is what bothers me right here, because that's a little bit tight for this uh, particular mechanism. Okay, enough of that, but uh, you know that, so that'll give you an idea of how you can uh, actually use this uh, double-sided uh, throw rod here to actually uh, control more than one turnout at the same time. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and take a look then at how to make the connections to these uh, to the switch machine or to the actual uh, switch located here on the bottom of the uh, blue point switch machine. Okay, so the first thing we need to understand is how these double pole, double throw switch machines are set up. Okay, so this is the double pole, double throw switch on the bottom of the blue point switch machine. Now, electrically, the two sides are independent. There's a divider going down between them here, and so that is independent from that. But they both throw at the same time. And you can use these as individual uh, single pole double throw switches or double pole double throw switches. What we're going to be doing in order to control polarity of the frog is just using one side of the switch. So you could use this other one to uh, control LEDs on the face of the layout. You could use them uh, to control signal lights. You could do a number of different things with the uh, other half of this double pole double throw switch. Now. Okay, back in the center there. What we're going to be doing is attaching the green wire that I uh, already have connected to the frogs uh, when we installed these uh, uh, electrofrog turnouts a few videos ago. And that wire will then uh, be connected either to the red or to the black uh, wires through these contacts. So if we attach the red wire here and the black one here, and the switch internally is thrown one way or the other, it will make an internal connection from the red to the green or from the black to the green. And that's the thing we need to set up now. We need to figure out which wire gets attached to which set of poles. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and we'll do the green, and then I'll show you how to determine the connection when, uh, that you need to make between the red and the black wires here. Okay, let's begin by going ahead and attaching this green wire from the frog to the uh, blue point switch machine that is controlling that specific turnout. And so the first thing we're going to need to do is strip off a little bit, not a lot, of the insulation 
on the end of the wire, like so. And then I'm going to uh, take my soldering iron, it's nice and warm, and I'm going to clean the tip. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pre tin the center pole right here on this turnout, uh, on this switch. Okay, and I'm also going to pre tin the end of our uh, frog wire here. There. Okay. Now we can go ahead and make the final connection. Okay, that's good and tight. Okay, so now how do we determine which wire needs to be uh, connected to our frog? Well, for that, I need to get my uh, voltmeter and I'll show you how that works. Okay, looking back at my list of, uh, of contacts here, uh, if we look at switch number five, and I went ahead and labeled each one of these uh, blue point switch machines according to the numbers of the turnouts above, so number five needs to be the, po the polarity of the frog. It needs to be attached to the red wire on the uh, DCC power bus. Okay, so I've set my uh, voltmeter up here. I've got it on the uh, resistance setting. Okay, so when I touch them together, the readout goes to essentially zero ohms resistance here. And that's what we want to see. That means a firm electrical connection. Uh, if they're not, then we're going to read zero point L. Okay, that's what the readout on this device gives me. So what I want to do then is find out which one of these uh, contacts uh, is going to be attached uh, to the, uh, to the needs to be attached to the red wire. Okay, so I already have, as, as we did above, I already set the turnout so that it is lined to go straight through. And when it is lined to go straight through, this wire needs to be attached to the red wire. So what I'm going to do is touch the green uh, solder contact we just made. And I'm going to move it so you can see what's going on on the display there. And if I touch this wire up here, you can see it goes to zero. So that means that if I attach the red wire here in, in, in the uh, turnout is thrown to be straight through, then the frog will be connected to the red wire on the power bus. And that is what we wanted. Now if I connected it down here to the lower one, I get no electrical connection at all. That's not what we want. So that's where we attach the black wire and we attach the red wire up here. Okay, so let me do that one more time. So I've got my uh, voltmeter set for resistance and we've got 0.L, and that means that there's no connection at all. If I then make an electrical connection here just by uh, connecting the two together, you can see it goes down to almost zero resistance here on the display. That means we've got a good electrical connection. So what we want to do then is we want to make sure that this green wire going to the frog, when turnout number five is set to be direct through, we want the frog wire here to be connected to the red wire in our power bus. So if I put this contact on the green wire, on the green pole, and if I attach or touch the other uh, uh, probe to this one up here, to this uh, contact, you can see the display on the voltmeter goes to zero. That means we have a direct connection through the switch to whatever wire I attach right here. So under this condition with it wired straight through, we want the red wire to be soldered here. And if we put the black wire down here, you can see when it's straight through, there's not going to be an electrical connection made and it's not going to short out. But then when the switch is thrown for the other direction, then the contact will be through this one. So basically then we want to attach our red wire here to get that red connection and we want the black wire here to the bottom one. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've cut a red and a black wire. 
uh, stripped the wire, uh, the uh, insulation off the ends. So let's go ahead and tin those so that we're ready. Let me see if I can stabilize these somewhere so I can do some soldering down here for you. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, pre-tin these two guys here. And I'm going to pre-tin the contacts on the bottom of our blue point switch machine. Okay, now, so we're going to want to connect the red one here to the top pole. and the black wire to the bottom. Okay. Now, I'm going to get out a couple of the uh, suitcase connectors that I use so that I don't have to do as much soldering. And we're going to make a connection to the red wire. And for that, I'm going to need to move up a little bit. Okay, so I've got my uh, red and black bus wires right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll pull out the red wire and make the connection there. And let me point out that I did a video previously on wiring uh, model railroads with uh, using uh, suitcase connectors. And I will add a link uh, to that video uh, above me right here. Okay. Okay. Okay, and that's all it is to making a connection using a suitcase connector. Very, very easy to do. A little fidgety in, in certain ways <laughs> in order to get it inserted and uh, then get it done. But once it's done, it makes a good, strong electrical connection if you use the right one for the right size wire. Okay. There we go. Now I'll bring up the black one and we'll insert it in here. Okay. And we'll pinch it. And close the lid of the suitcase. Okay, so that's how you make that type of connection for your power. Now what I'm going to do for the rest of these, I need to go ahead and go ahead and make the connections here for all the rest of these green uh, frog wires here on the uh, underside of the layout. But for making uh, the connections here uh, on these other black and red uh, contacts that we're going to need to make, I'm just going to daisy chain the wires through here like so and then daisy chain this one to this one and this one down to this one and so on, so that I don't have to use as many of these uh, suitcase connectors underneath of the layout. Okay, once I am done with making all the other connections here under the layout, uh, I'll show you what it looks like so you can see what I've been talking about once I've done it. And then we'll flip the layout back up uh, on its legs and we'll run a, a locomotive through here and test to make sure that there aren't any short circuits uh, underneath of the layout as a result of what I've done here. Now if we do find a short circuit, all I'll have to do is disconnect one of these two wires, the black and the red wire, and swap their positions. But since I went through and did the, uh, the black and red uh, connection determination in advance, 
we shouldn't have to do any of that. Okay, let me go ahead and get, uh, get some soldering done. And uh, when I'm uh, through here, I'll come back and show you how, the, how it looks and we'll see if it actually works. Well, I got everything uh, done now so that we can take a look at how, the, uh, how, this is going to, how this is wired and how it's going to work for us. So if you can see, as I explained, I made the connections here to the main power bus with the red and the black wires and then ran them down to uh, switch machine number five. And I had tested it as I showed you uh, and hooked up, you know, the red and the black wires so they would be appropriately uh, so that would, they would be properly lined to the correct polarity for the frog on this turnout when it is lined straight through. And then, as I said, I ran all of the uh, uh, red and the black wires amongst the various switch machines, just daisy chaining them together instead of, you know, repeating the drop from the feeders. So that worked out fine. It uh, wasn't any problem. Just ran these through here and connected them through. What I want to show you now is flip, I'm going to flip it back up on its legs and I'll show you how you can test uh, using a simple, you know, automotive taillight bulb and then we'll see if we can run a train. Okay, I've got the layout uh, or the module back up on its uh, legs and I want to run through some tests here to show you that uh, the polarity of the frog is correct uh, based on the way that we uh, did the predeterminations for the uh, connections of the red and the black wires and <laughs> I got everything wired correctly. So what I have here is a standard uh, automotive taillight bulb. I think it's probably from a parking light or something like that. It's rated at about 0.8 amps. And I have a uh, North Coast Engineering uh, power cab DCC system temporarily patched in here to give us track power so that we can test this. And what I have on this is uh, just two clip leads. So I can attach this to the track or just touch it to the track to test uh, for power and correct polarity. And any time that I touch the clip leads to two rails that are of opposite polarity, uh, the light will come on. If they're the same polarity, then it will not come on. So let's go ahead, I'll attach it right here to a couple of rails and you can see the bulb lights up. Okay, now let's go back and let's take a look at this uh, switch or this turnout here. So I'll attach one to the red rail and I'll, I'll, I'll just touch the other to, a, uh, to the black rail and you can see it's lighting up. So let's check the frog. And everything is still uh, lined to go straight through. So if I touch the frog, it, the light comes on. So they're opposite polarity. Okay, now if I then, let's try another one over here. Um, we'll go back to back on this side and you can see this is the uh, uh, frog or this is the turnout that goes to the yard lead. So I've got it hooked up here. We can check the main and yes, we've got power on the main track. Let's check the frog itself. No problems there. And we can go back here and do the same test and you can see this is the lead up to the, uh, to the station and there it is. We're lit again. So we've got no problems. The method that I showed you for uh, predetermining the red and black connections for the frog works fine. And I've tested the other uh, turnouts on the layout already and I can tell you that they all worked the same way. So the system works, so go ahead and give that a try the next time that you're uh, installing uh, turnouts on your layout and you need to uh, go ahead and attach the correct wires uh, to, the, to the frog. Now, and I'll say that this will work with any type of uh, a double pole, double throw switch, single pole, double throw switch arrangement, no matter whether it's the blue points or tortoise switch machines or any other kind of uh, switch control that uses those types of, uh, of turnout controls. So what, what I want to do now then, let's go ahead and I'll get the uh, power cab and we'll go ahead and call up a locomotive and r see if it runs. Okay, I've got, the, uh, I've got the power cab and we'll go ahead and put a locomotive on the track. And just to remind you that, you know, even though this is the UK version uh, that I'm working on, um, an American locomotive will still operate on this layout. So what I'm going to do, this is 2259, so let me call that up. I'm going to select loco 2259 
and we'll hit enter. Let's turn some sound on. And some lights. Okay, there's, you can't probably see the headlight. But at any rate, as you can see, it is working. Let me zoom out a little bit and we'll run it through the layout. Now we can go ahead and run it through some of these turnouts and see what it's going to do. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and throw this turnout here. And we'll run it down into the yard lead. Apparently my truck is catching on the tip of this little uh, throw wire here, so I need to come back and uh, snip that back some more. But otherwise, we're not having any problems going through these frogs. And I think I can power th past that wire, yes. Mm. And run back. There we go. And back onto the adjacent track. There we are. Okay, so that gives you an idea of uh, how these work and uh, how to test to find out if some of those little wires are sticking up too high. So I need to go back and trim a couple of these uh, throw wires off a little bit more because some of these trucks do uh, sit kind of low. Okay, so that's going to be a wrap for today. And what I'm going to do on Friday is we, now that we've got all the turnouts installed, all of the Blue Point uh, switch machines installed and all the wiring installed, I want to go ahead and install the DCC systems. So come on back Friday uh, for the video on how to install an NCE power cap or any other type of DCC system to your model railroad. See you then. Bye now.